Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Welcome to our nightly reflections. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our gathering here. We're going to give, uh, inshallah, a few seconds to our brothers and sisters to join in, log in, and hopefully, inshallah, share with other families and friends so that, inshallah, they can also benefit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, accept this as a means of barakah and blessing for all of us. I'm going to share this on my page. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem Amma ba'd Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana Innaka anta lalimul hakeem Rabbi shahli sadri wa yassirli amri Wahlul uqdatan min lisani yafkahu qawli Rabbi yassir wa la tuassir wa tammimhu lana bil khair Ya fattahu, ya fattahu, ya fattah Respected brothers and elders, mothers and sisters in Islam We are truly grateful We are thankful for the bounties and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase for all of us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us from amongst righteous in this world May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our lives with mercy and rahmah As all of us are in the need of the rahmah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so brothers and sisters, we begin uh, our tonight's reflection with a topic uh, that I think it's so, so important for all of us to understand and realize, and that is the topic of anger. So uh, forgive me, there's like this light that is coming, this is not, not special nur, but I don't know, there's like weird setting today, so I apologize for that. So going back to our topic, so our topic for tonight is anger, and I think this is so important to understand at this time because anger plays such a role in our lives that it could actually make some of the best moments of our lives to be the most difficult or the worst situations that could ever come upon a person. And brothers and sisters, the effect of anger is upon our spiritual health. The effect of anger is upon our family and it's also upon our career and our lives as well. So the impact of it is such that it, it affects everything altogether. And when you look at the Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and, and tonight I'm going to share with you seven things from the life of the Prophet وسلم, regarding anger and how do we treat anger or how do we try to solve this situation because it is impossible. The Quran actually doesn't teach us nor the Sunnah teaches us to never become angry because that's not possible. So if any of you listening to me right now or myself, if we think that by listening to this or reading something, I will be able to have 100% no anger, that's not possible. Because it is impossible to let go of something that is naturally a part of a human being. It is impossible. So the Quran never tells us to let go of the anger. The Quran teaches us to decrease the anger or utilize that anger in different venues or different avenues so that we can gauge our anger or our rage at, diff at different times. Because brothers and sisters, uh, as we hear this and we learn a lot of times that you know the, the greatest you know, remedy of anger is delay. Wallahi, I, I, I always love that quote, is that one of the greatest remedy of anger is delay. Let, let, let's hold back for a little bit and understand what you're going through that you can really, you know, able to tackle the situation. So let's come to tonight's session without delaying it further. So when it comes to the prophetic teaching of anger, one thing that I uh, that we all understand is it is impossible to never be angry. It is not possible. Luqman the wise told his son that, Oh my son, do not be amongst those individuals who become angry and never lets go of the anger because that is the sifat and the quality of shaitan. And oh my son, do not be a person who is dealt with in a bad manner and doesn't become angry and do not become like an animal. Uh, he refers to as, as as the donkey. Do not become a donkey. Why? Because anger is a part of our life. 
but how do we gauge our anger? How do we take care of our anger is something that I want to share with you tonight. Umar bin Khattab, anhu, the great companion of Rasulullah, we all know about his life. His characteristics were very strong. <laughs> he was a very powerful person in his nature. He was a person with rage and anger and everything. That was him. That was Umar bin Khattab. After accepting Islam, it wasn't that his anger left him. Right? It wasn't that he said, Ashhadu wa la ilaha illa wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, and the anger just left his life. No. The anger remained, but it was used for a good cause. It was never used in a manner that hurt someone else, nor it hurt him spiritually, nor it hurt his family, nor it hurt his dealing with others. So this is something, brothers and sisters, that we as a community must remember and learn that anger is something that will remain, but how do we gauge and how do we utilize the situation and how do we you know, deal with anger is something that we need to learn from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Looking at the life, the prophetic character, as we began yesterday with the mannerism of the Prophet Wasallam with our families, the Prophet ﷺ in his entire life, Nabuwa 23 years, before Nabuwa prophecy 40 years, 63 years of his entire life, never did once the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ became angry for his own self, meaning for his own that, for his own personal need. Yes, he did become angry at certain situations but it was only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the Prophet sallallahu mentions in one of the hadith, which is not exactly the topic of anger, but the Prophet sallallahu said, Man ahabba lillah wa abghada lillah. The one who loves for Allah and the one who moves away for the sake of Allah. Man a'ata lillah wa man lillah. And the one who gives for the sake of Allah and the one with the holds for the sake of Allah has completed and perfect, perfected their faith. Which means that sometimes us not caring for others or not interacting with others is perfecting our iman as well. So sometimes holding ourselves back is also a part of our iman as well. So going back to anger, the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu never in his entire life in 63 years became angry at someone because of his own personal desires, his needs for his own self. It was all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his deen. Let's go towards some of the things that we can do as a, as a person, as, as a believing man, as a believing woman. What are some of the things that we can do to fight anger, minimize it, and lessen the effect of it on our spirituality, lessen the effect of anger upon our families, and also on our careers? What should we do? The first thing is seek the refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek the protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from anger. And I'm going to share this with you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa saw, and he said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, if a person gets angry, and if he says, A'udhu billahi min ash shaytani rajim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa if you get angry and you say this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, their anger will go away. Hadith, Sulaiman radiallahu anhu mentions that me, I was with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we saw two people in front of us. They were getting into a conflict. They were talking to one another and one of the persons became so loud that his face became red and the veins from his neck were popping and showing like he was so angry that we could see from far away. The Nabi of Allah Sallallahu said, and, and Sulaiman radiallahu reports this, the Prophet Sallallahu said, I know a word, a kalima. If he were to say this, he would not feel this way and this feeling would go away. And if he said, he wouldn't feel the anger as he's feeling at this moment. So the first thing, the first remedy that our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu taught us in the time of anger is to say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. Number one. Number two, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recommended us to remain silent. And brothers and sisters, I cannot emphasize enough as a person who deal with uh, you know, questions with people, ifta as a mufti, people ask questions. Wallahi, some of the most difficult times are when family members and spouses are coming and they're saying that we regret the moments that we said these words to our spouses and now our entire relationships and families are finished. Everything is done because it was that anger, that moment that allowed them to say things that they would never say when they were not angry. Wallahi, if you think about it, 
you might have said certain things in your life that you would have never said if you were not angry. So number two thing is, from the prophetic tradition, from the Quran and Sunnah, number one was, seek the protection of Allah, refuge of Allah. Say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. The Prophet ﷺ said, because anger is from shaitan, hadith of Rasulullah sallam. We believe in the words of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As Sadiq wal Masduq, the most truthful Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, anger is from shaitan. Seek the protection of Allah from shaitan when you become angry. Number one thing. Number two, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, keep silent, become quiet. I want to share with you the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned, if any of you becomes angry. Let him become silent, the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu said. The more that you speak, the more that you're you are going to make that mistake. And I said this in, in, a, in a session a few weeks, a few days ago. Umar radiallahu anhu saw Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And who is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu? One of the greatest individuals amongst the greatest of the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu The first Khalifa in Islam, the man who Rasulullah Sallallahu said, I have fulfilled the haqq of every person. But the haqq of Abu Bakr only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill. And what is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu doing? He's holding his tongue. And what is Umar radiallahu anhu saying? What are you doing, my brother? What is this? So he lets go of his tongue. He says, Jirmuhu sagheer wa jirmuhu kabir. The size of my tongue is small, but the jurm, the crime of my tongue is very big. This is what Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is saying. One hadith the Prophet ﷺ said, Man sakata naja, the one who remained quiet became successful. The Nabi of Allah Sallallahu says, the one who speaks the most is more likely to make a mistake or commit a mistake. So the second thing Rasulullah uh, you know, recommended us as an ummah, that when you become angry, become silent. For indeed, this is the, the means of your success. The third thing is uh, what from the prophetic tradition of the Prophet Sallallahu is that a person should relax themselves. And what do I mean by relaxing yourself? Let me share this from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and then, then let, you what, let, let you know what that means. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, if you become angry and you are standing, sit down right away. Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And then the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said, if you are sitting down and you become angry, the Prophet Sallallahu said, you should lie down on the floor. Just lie down. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, and then one hadith the Prophet ﷺ said, even if that doesn't work, go and perform wudu. For indeed, shaitan is from fire, and the only way the fire will be cleansed is through water and make wudu. So relax yourself in that situation. Move away from the source of anger. Wallahi Rasulullah, when things became such that would anger him, the Sahaba said, we would only see the visible features from the Prophet Sallallahu and the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu would become silent. Move away. And he, the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whenever he, he dislikes something, this was the amal of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah give us the akhlaq and mannerism of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Sahaba said, whenever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dislikes something, he would turn his face away from that thing. He would turn his face away from that thing. Anything that he disliked or any action or amal or deed that he disliked, the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu just looked away from that. So you need to relax. Move away from the source of anger is what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us. Sit down. Lie down. Get that anger. And number three thing is relax yourself. Number four thing is from the prophetic hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we also learned this. That understand what angers you. And, and learn to cope and understand that situation with yourself. And know what Allah has kept for you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for controlling your anger. I want to share with you this very beautiful hadith, wallahi. And, and, and sometimes when you feel like becoming angry in certain situations, this hadith is, and of course, I'm weak too. You know, I lose it sometimes myself. But, you know, this hadith always inspires me. Uh, you know, Rasulullah sallallahu said, whoever controls their anger, his or her anger, at the time when he or she has the means to act upon it, right? Some of us can say, oh, I'm so mad, I'm so angry, I'm going to do this. But they really can't do anything, right? Like they don't have the strength or the power to do anything in their anger. They're just saying things. But if someone has that strength, that power, that ability to execute their power, but now they hold themselves back, Rasulullah said, on the day of Qiyamah, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise this individual and fill their heart with contentment and sakoon on the day of Qiyamah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will announce, take for whatever you wish of your desire of Jannah. Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu A person who has the strength and the ability to execute their anger and they hold themselves back for the sake of Allah and say, you know what, I'm not going to lose it. I'm not going to let go of my anger. Rasulullah sallallahu said two things on the day of Qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise that individual on the day of judgment and fill their heart with contentment, sakoon. May Allah fill our hearts with sakoon in this life and akhirah. And second, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow them to choose whatever they wish on the day of Qiyamah from amongst the Jannah. So understand what makes you angry. Number five, know those things who control your anger uh, and, 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 and what triggers that. Uh, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned to us that the strongest amongst you is not the one who can wrestle or throw someone down. Laysa shadidu bi sura'a. Rasulullah sallam said, that the strongest amongst you is not the person who can tackle someone else or put them to the ground. But the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu said that innama shadid amongst you, the strongest is the one who can control themselves at the time of anger. That's what Rasulullah Sallallahu said. The strongest amongst you, you know, the most powerful amongst you, Rasulullah Sallallahu mentioned, is that he's not or she's not the person who can tackle or throw someone. But Rasulullah Sallallahu said, who can control their anger. Second hadith, Rasulullah said, the strongest person is the one who when he gets angry or she gets angry, their face doesn't become red, nor their voices rise, but they're able to defeat their anger. Rasulullah said, from amongst the signs of nifaq, hypocrisy, uh, one hadith Rasulullah said, whenever they speak, they speak a lie. Whenever they make a promise, they break their promise. And whenever they are entrusted with amanat, they will break someone's trust. And then one hadith has an additional fourth thing. And it says, A sign of a munafiq is that whenever he or she becomes angry, they lose it. Meaning you are not secure from their hands and their tongue. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu mentioned, uh, I remember Sheikh Saf, uh, you know, Safraz Khan Sab Sabda Rahimahullah ta'ala anhu, who was one of the greatest scholars of Pakistan who passed away a few years ago. He had the smallest chain of narration to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in Pakistan. So I actually went to see him with my father uh, to go and learn the hadith from him so I could have that chain of narration through him to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Because when you study Islamic studies, all of your chain of narration goes back to the Prophet Muhammad So I remember I went to the Shaykh al-Hadith in one of the greatest shaykh of his time. And when I asked him, Shaykh, can you narrate one hadith? He, he mentioned this hadith to me. Wallahi, I still remember. He says, a mu'min is that mu'min. A true believer is that believer from whose hand and tongue others are secure. If someone doesn't feel comfortable knowing that you may say something about them, or do something to them, then you cannot be a believer. If someone is insecure of your tongue in your hand, that means your iman cannot be perfected. <clears throat> so, so, so knowing uh, the strongest amongst us is, is, is a person who can control. Number six, brothers and sisters, uh, Rasulullah sallam taught us to realize the consequences of our anger, right? Realize the consequences of our anger. I was reading a story, and I'm not sure if that was true or not. Wallah, Allah knows best that there was a father who bought this beautiful car. His son scratched it one day, and the father became so full of anger that he started beating the child on his hand until the, the hand broke of his son. And then he realized that it was just few scratches that he could have taken care of. But now he lost the hand of his own child. And you must have heard the story again and again where a father tells a child or a mother tells a child that whenever you become, an, become angry, go and put a nail inside the wall. And when this child did this for many days and they began to control their anger, they saw all these holes, which means that the wounds and the consequences of anger, brothers and sisters, are very severe. As one of the Arabic poets mentioned, that the wounds of the swords will heal but this, the wounds of your tongue will never heal. So learn the consequences. I don't want to make this further, but last but not least, Rasulullah taught us to make a dua. Make dua to protect you from anger. And amongst that is, 
A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is one of the greatest things that you can recite. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. So I'm going to go back and conclude this. There are seven things that I shared with you quickly regarding anger. And I begin by saying this, Rasulullah never in his life personally became angry at any individual because of his own self. Because brothers and sisters, anger has an effect not only on ourselves but our spiritual health, on our family life. It has effect upon our career as well. So number one thing that I shared with you, quickly going back, seeking Allah's protection. Recite A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem whenever you become angry. Number two, keep yourself silent. Number three, move yourself away from the source of anger. Sit down, lie down, make wudu, make two rakats of salah. Number four, understand what makes you angry. The triggers, the point, the things that make you angry. As Rasulullah mentioned, the rewards of what you will get. If you let go of your anger, if you can choose anything in Jannah and the contentment of your heart. Number five, know that those who control their anger are praised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will be the strongest person in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you are able to control your anger. Number six, realize the consequences, the effects. It's very easy to become angry. Shout at someone, say a few things. But brothers and sisters, so many times we will regret for the rest of our lives I wish I would have never said that. But it was only anger that allowed us and shaitan behind that that allow us to say this. Recognize your uh, you know, consequences of our words. And last but not least, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because nothing can happen without the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and preserve us. Give us the akhlaq and the mannerism of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all of us and allow us to live a life according to the Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah, we'll see you tomorrow night. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.